When a disgruntled gorilla adamantly prevented anyone from approaching, the sanctuary staff became deeply worried. However, their apprehension turned to utter astonishment and shock upon inspecting his hand. When Bobo first arrived at the Mafu Primate Sanctuary at the age of two, he had already faced significant challenges. Born in the wild, he experienced a typical upbringing until tragedy struck. Poachers invaded his home, forcibly separating him from his mother, rendering Bobo an orphan too young to fend for himself. Discovered by sanctuary staff, Bobo was reintegrated with other young gorillas who had endured similar ordeals. Over time, Bobo matured into the alpha of his pack, growing in size, strength, and stature, eclipsing his fellow gorillas at the sanctuary. No poacher dared confront a gorilla of his colossal size. Fortunately, the entire South African sanctuary cherished Bobo, fostering a deep affection for him, just as they did for every creature within the premises. Throughout their years of operation, the sanctuary rescued over 300 apes and monkeys, offering refuge to animals displaced by poaching or in need of assistance due to injury. A woman named Alyssa played a pivotal role in Bobo's life, raising and guiding him into a robust and wise gorilla. Possessing an intimate understanding of Bobo's temperament and nuances, Alyssa could discern his moods, distinguishing between contentment and agitation. Their extraordinary bond, akin to a mother-son connection, allowed Alyssa to connect with Bobo when others couldn't. Even as Bobo grew to a formidable 300 pounds with an imposing presence, he and Alyssa maintained a deep mutual love and respect. Despite his size and potential for aggression, Bobo wielded authority judiciously, particularly when dealing with his gorilla peers. In reality, Bobo harbored an exceptionally sweet side, often revealing it to fellow apes and even certain staff members at the sanctuary. Witnessing such a massive creature exhibit gentleness and affection was always a striking spectacle. However, when faced with challenges to his position as the Alpha, Bobo could swiftly transition to his forceful and dominant persona. For instance, when two younger males, Kibu and McCain, attempted to challenge his authority, a fierce altercation ensued. Although Alyssa and the keepers eventually managed to separate the combatants, the outcome favored Bobo, solidifying his position as the group's alpha. One day, Alyssa began to observe peculiar behavior in Bobo. While he typically roamed his enclosure, engaging with various stimuli and items, he started hiding in the tall grass, distancing himself from the group both physically and mentally. This change raised concerns among the staff and other apes accustomed to Bobo's active participation. Alyssa, determined to uncover the truth, closely monitored Bobo and discovered that he wasn't concealing himself in the long grass but rather hiding something there. In addition to their physical strength, gorillas proved to be intelligent and emotional beings, capable of keeping their own secrets. If Bobo intended to keep something hidden, no one could easily uncover it without risking harm. Recognizing this, Alyssa devised a plan and patiently waited for the opportune moment to feed Bobo. Continuing the narrative, she then served Bobo his meal in the cage. The giant gorilla entered happily, sat down, and began eating, oblivious to Alyssa's actions. Seizing the opportunity, she closed the cage behind him, ensuring a safe entry into his enclosure. Despite being confined, Bobo appeared unfazed, his attention fixed on the meal. Alyssa, determined to unravel the mystery, waded through the long grass, keeping a vigilant eye out for anything suspicious. Upon reaching the spot where Bobo had been acting strangely, she was astonished to find nothing unusual except for flattened grass where he had been seated. Relieved that there was no apparent danger, Alyssa continued her investigation. However, she soon discovered that Bobo hadn't hidden anything in the grass. Instead, he carried the secret item with him at all times. It was only when Alyssa observed him closely, holding something in his massive hands, that she realized she had been deceived. Intrigued and more determined than ever, Alyssa sought to uncover the nature of the mysterious object. The challenge, however, was that whenever she or others attempted to approach and identify the item, Bobo reacted with anger and irritation. He would run. Off finding a secluded spot to hide and maintain distance from anyone trying to get close. Aware of Bobo's potential for violence, 
no one dared provoke him. Even fellow guerrillas, sensing his secretive behavior, became curious about the concealed object. Yet, whenever they approached, Bobo would scream and chase them away, guarding his enigmatic possession fiercely. It appeared that uncovering the secret would be an insurmountable challenge. Yet, there was always one person who could establish a connection with Bobo more effectively than anyone else, Alyssa. After numerous failed attempts, she finally managed to get close enough to witness the shocking truth of what he held in his hands. To her amazement, it wasn't an object or a coveted treat that Bobo was keeping to himself. Instead, it was an unexpected and unusual sight, a tiny animal. At first, Alyssa thought it resembled a rodent, perhaps a mouse or a rat. However, closer inspection with binoculars revealed the surprising reality, the small creature was a galago, a type of primate seldom cared for at the sanctuary. It must have ventured into Bobo's enclosure from the surrounding forest. Astonishingly, Bobo had discovered and adopted it as a pet, prodding, stroking, and playing games with the tiny galago. Despite the vast size difference, the little primate seemed entirely comfortable with the massive gorilla, often venturing into the long grass or running around but always returning to Bobo, displaying a remarkable bond. Galagos were nocturnal hunters, and Alyssa initially believed the creature might leave during the nights. However, her surprise deepened when she learned that Bobo not only shared his space but also shared food with the tiny primate, personally feeding it. The revelation left the other gorillas in the sanctuary just as shocked and intrigued as Alyssa and the rest of the staff. Despite Bobo's imposing presence, he ensured they all maintained a safe distance. The love Alyssa had showered on him during his upbringing seemed to be redirected toward his diminutive and highly unusual Galago friend. Now it's your turn, what are your thoughts on this extraordinary story? Have you ever encountered such a remarkable bond between a massive animal and a small, adorable creature? We always appreciate hearing from you, so please share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Let's continue. When a man can't take good care of his dog, he decides that instead of giving it up for adoption or sending it to a shelter, he takes him deep into the woods and leaves him there. But a few years later, the unbelievable happened which the lonely and abandoned dog never expected, Dakota was a beautiful and loving dog who was fiercely loyal to his owner, Paul. Paul adopted him when he was a puppy and raised him to be a nice, strong dog. The pair used to go for walks together and spend the day together. Wherever Paul is, Dakota is there too. They have the most perfect, ideal relationship that a human and a dog can have. Besides hunting with Dakota, Paul enjoys breeding him with other dogs to produce puppies. Dakota was an amazing and loving mother who cared for each of her puppies until they had to say goodbye. But one strange thing about Dakota, the offspring he gave birth to were very wolf-like in appearance, he escaped once and mated with a wolf, and since then, he has been fighting wild predators that live in the forest very similar. Paul was shocked, but he didn't mind, the puppies all looked exotic and when he sold them, they fetched a much higher price. But unfortunately one day Dakota couldn't have any more puppies, she gave birth four times with four to five puppies each time, the repeated process took a toll on her body, veterinarian strongly advised Paul not to find a mate for it to reproduce. That's when Paul and Dakota's relationship began to change. Paul became more and more indifferent to it, and he spent less and less time with it and cared for it. He seems to be slowly but surely losing interest in his pets. One day he took Dakota for a walk, and they walked and walked, deep into the forest, over hills, through woods, far beyond where they had gone before. After a while, Paul pulled Dakota away and threw a stick for him to give chase. Dakota loves to play catch, chasing after the stick as soon as it leaves his hand. When the stick finally hits the ground, it pounces on it, chews it, and rolls it in its mouth. But when it stood up, it found it was the only one. It looked around, whined softly, and started calling for its owner, but Paul was nowhere to be seen. It followed. The way they had come, but there was no sign of them. It is lost and alone. Dakota slowly realized that it had been abandoned. With a heavy heart, it curled up in a ball on the leaves and fell asleep. 
When Dakota woke up, it was dark and cold. But its sense of smell tells it that it's not alone and that it can smell another animal, maybe even more than one. It looked around, eyes wide in the dark, to see what its senses had picked up. Then suddenly a big bad wolf came striding out of the darkness, and Dakota didn't seem frightened, standing up to meet the wolf. Dakota is a big dog, but the wolf is still taller than him. They sniffed each other for a long time before the wolf decided to lie down. Dakota paused for a moment, then lay down beside it. It was clear that the two animals knew each other well. The truth is, this is the same wolf that was raised with dogs years ago. They thought of each other and felt a strange deep emotional bond. The wolf seemed to understand that Dakota was in some kind of sad pain, and he promised him protection. This wolf was obviously the leader of the pack, and the other wolves approached Dakota, growling and sniffing through gritted teeth. But the leader would snap them up and tell them to line up again. The wolves will soon understand that although Dakota is just a dog, he is now part of the pack and they must treat him as such. Over the next few months, Dakota got used to the wolves. Of course, he missed Paul terribly, but as the days passed and he stopped coming to him, it became clear that he didn't care about him anymore. He became friends with all the wolves and even spent time playing and grooming them. But its real talent lies in being a mother, and Dakota is a wonderful mother every time she has a baby. One day, it will have a chance to put its skills to good use. A female wolf recently gave birth, and the process took a toll on her body. She successfully gave birth to three cubs, but they died from overwork shortly after birth. Fortunately, Dakota is available to help raise the cubs. He treats them like his own puppies, caring for them, grooming them, and teaching them basic life skills. As these little newborns grew into cuddly pups, Dakota watched them protect them like a real mother, and felt it was his responsibility to take pride in it. When they left to form their own pack, it felt the same pain that Paul had felt when he gave away his pup. Years passed, and one day Dakota went to the forest to stretch her legs, and she still loved to walk, even run as fast as she could, and play games, just like when she belonged to Paul. But what it doesn't realize is that it has strayed too far from its own group and entered another group's territory. That's bad news, especially for dogs. Dakota walked happily until he found many wolf eyes watching him from the woods, and this group of strange wolves approached Dakota. Not used to dogs roaming the forest, the wolves considered the dog an easy prey to kill and eat. Dakota was a coward, and when the fierce and angry pack surrounded him, he whined and had no other choice. The poor dog was about to be killed, and there was nothing he could do about it. People say your whole life flashes before your eyes before you die, and dogs are said to do the same. Dakota remembers being adopted by Paul the first time, how she loved being with him, how she had so many puppies, how he eventually betrayed her and left her in the forest. It remembered meeting the wolf, and it took it into the pack without hesitation. He remembers helping to raise the cubs and loving them as his own. Dakota closed her eyes, waiting for the wolves to pounce, when suddenly another voice came from out of nowhere. Three wolves jumped out of the darkness of the forest and pounced on the larger wolves around Dakota. Focusing on the three new attackers, the pack began to defend itself. Howling and clawing, they tried violently to bring down the new foe, but after a long fight, the strange pack was defeated by three strong and proud mystic wolves. Dakota, meanwhile, has been lying flat on the ground, motionless, like a rock, hoping not to be caught and killed in the fight. But looking up, its tail began to wag at the pack of wolves that had just rescued it. These are the three cubs it raised a few years ago. They've grown bigger than him, but Dakota is still instantly recognizable, he recognizes them by the way. Dakota jumped up and ran to them, brushing each of them in turn. That day, its life was saved by children who were not its own. But it's clear they consider Dakota the best mother they can be, and they'll never forget her kindness to them. This shows that even though humans may turn their backs on animals, other animals do. Not, and even though they may be separated by time distance or even species, they are still able to love and protect each other in times of need. 
So are animals really that simple in their minds? Or are humans underestimating them? That's up to you, what do you think of this incredible story? Are you strong enough if you're forced to abandon your pet? As always, we love hearing your thoughts, so be sure to leave your views and opinions in the comments section below. Let's continue. In the streets and alleys of the city, we can often see stray cats and dogs. In order to survive, they have suffered too much. Some stray animals wandered with their parents because they were born, and some were lost by their owners, so they don't have the ability to survive at all. Their fate is all determined by people, and they have no choice. There is no way to resist, it is tragic. Fortunately, some stray animals will be helped by local shelters. At least there, the stray animals can live without the threat of starvation. But even though their lives are difficult, they still retain a pure feeling in their hearts. There is such a kind-hearted little boy who decides to adopt a stray dog in an animal shelter. Seeing the dog in front of him, the boy shed tears with sadness. What happened next that the scene moved everyone present? Jackson is four years old this year. He was born in the small town of Charleston, South Carolina, USA. He and his parents live a happy life. Jackson's father is a Marine and often lives far away from home. Work somewhere, leaving him and his mother at home. Jackson's mother did not go out to work, and her main task was to stay at home and take care of Jackson wholeheartedly. Like any other four-year-old, Jackson has a lot of energy and often enjoys playing in the yard. Jackson's mother is a keen advocate for animal protection, helping local animal shelters find homes for stray animals. In her spare time, Jackson's mother would share with him the stories between herself and animals. Over time, under the influence of her mother, Jackson's love for small animals gradually increased, especially for dogs, which are Jackson's favorite animals. He fantasizes about one day being able to play with all the dogs. The mother told Jackson that the family can only have three dogs at most. At present, there are two dogs and one cat in Jackson's house. Jackson's favorite is one of the dogs named Geo, because it is very quiet, the gentle character gave Jackson the warmest company. Jackson spends hours in the yard with the dogs every day, until the day ends in mud. The dogs brought him as much joy and smiles as children. In addition to taking care of Jackson, Jackson's mother devoted all her energy to the cause of helping stray animals, and also helped to make up for the sadness that her husband could not be by her side because of her career. The most worrying thing for Jackson's mother is to take care of her four-year-old son, because as the child grows up, he will be interested in more and more things. In addition, Jackson's love for dogs, he wants to raise more dogs, but there is a rule in the family that dogs cannot be kept. Although his mother will treat all animals equally, some dogs are naturally aggressive and may hurt humans, such as dogs like bull terriers. There are also some dogs that were born for the cause of dog fighting, and there are many unfriendly factors growing in their bodies. If there is not enough time and love, it is impossible to influence the hearts of such dogs. But there are some dogs that naturally display warm qualities towards humans, as well as their strong desire to protect, such as dogs like Golden Retrievers or Border Collies, which are generally bred as nursery dogs. Although dogs have different personalities, in the eyes of children, they are all cute little animals. Once children get in touch with dogs, they will give them all their love unconditionally. Jackson's favorite dog breed is a pit bull, but Jackson was told that if he wanted to adopt a pit bull, he had to work hard on his own. Every week, he would save half of his pocket money to help him develop good financial habits, which allowed Jackson to learn a lot from it. Many people may wonder what a four-year-old child knows, but in the following days, they will be surprised to find that children can do many things that adults cannot do. Because Jackson's mother has been helping the animal shelter for a long time, she sometimes brings Jackson with her. Jackson has the opportunity to visit the animal shelter and learn about the living habits of many small animals. Little Jackson called the animal shelter a cute factory, which allowed him to learn about new animals and make many new friends. The staff of the animal shelter all knew this cute little guy. 
It was a very ordinary Sunday. As usual, Jackson was out on a mission with his mother. They were about to visit some animal shelters, but today there was a mission. Jackson was allowed to adopt another puppy, Jackson brought all his pocket money with him, ready to give the puppy a warm home. Jackson and his mother are going to an animal shelter they have never been to, Charleston Animal Society. Jackson is ecstatic, because he is about to explore an unknown place, which makes him feel very excited, and maybe he can meet cute and interesting little one's animal. After coming to the Charleston Animal Association, Jackson and his mother introduced their purpose of coming, and then they were led by the staff to the place where the stray animals lived. At this moment, Jackson was caught by a black and white animal in the corner. The dog attracted attention, and I hurriedly asked the staff about the dog's information. This cute puppy is named Penelope. It is a dog that has just been adopted, because it is not very familiar with the environment. Seems a little timid. Jackson came to Penelope's side, knelt down and tried to stroke the dog's head, but to his surprise, the dog ran away in fear, which made Jackson feel lost. Generally, dogs are very close relatives, but this dog is behaving very abnormally. After learning from the staff that the dog had been hurt by humans when it was wandering, so it still doesn't trust humans very much. Jackson felt sorry for the dog and patiently communicated with Penelope. Bringing snacks to the dog, Penelope seemed to sense Jackson's kindness, gradually let go of his guard, and tried to accept Jackson's kindness. In this way, Jackson quickly established a friendly relationship with Penelope. Jackson told his mother that he wanted to take the puppy home, but his mother refused, because the dog was a pit bull, and pit bulls were not allowed in the family. Jackson tried his best but failed to get his mother's agree, Jackson looked at Penelope in front of him but couldn't give him a home, almost heartbroken, tears fell down, at this moment, Penelope seemed to sense Jackson's heart, carefully coming to Jackson's side, he stretched out his front paws to put on Jackson's little head, as if stroking Jackson's head and comforting him. All the people present were moved by this scene. Jackson's mother saw that the bulldog, which has always been aggressive, has such a family side, and she immediately softened her heart. She turned to Jackson and said, if you want to adopt this dog, you must ensure that you can't give it up at will, and you must be responsible to the dog. Let the dog be your lifelong partner. Jackson was so happy that he burst into laughter immediately, took out all his pocket money from his pocket and put it in front of the staff, turned around and hugged Penelope, from since then, Jackson has a good partner who will accompany him all his life. The friendship between humans and dogs can be regarded as the most sincere friendship in the world today. As the most loyal companion of human beings, dogs have played many irreplaceable roles in modern life. Just to show that love is mutual, even animals understand this truth. Don't easily hurt a loyal animal to you.